What's up Team Cat Mojo? Beautiful people, it's your cat daddy here. You can feel it in the air. It is electric with the holiday season. Speaking of electric, today I'm gonna talk about all the things that might go wrong and could go wrong and kinda will go wrong when it comes to Christmas trees and what you can do about it. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of Christmas trees. Well, the pros are it's a Christmas tree. There is nothing that duplicates that feeling of walking into the home and smelling the pine and seeing the lights and all the rest of your lights are out and the snow in the distance and everything that we associate with the holidays seems to be summed up by that tree. And so there's a lot of positive to it. Now we're gonna talk about the cons of Christmas trees. There's a lot of them. Number one, pine needles. Pine needles are a dangerous thing and they're always falling off the tree. And you would be surprised by how many vets are kept late at the office or are called in to work on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day to go into a dog or a cat and get a pine needle out from their digestive tract somewhere. They are sharp, they don't digest easily, and they will just wreck everything in their path. So that's number one. Number Number two, tree water. Yes, the bucket underneath the tree where you put water, all of that sort of stuff collects, that's toxic for animals. And if you have a cat, which I'm kind of assuming if you're watching me, you, you probably have a cat, it, it is toxic for cats and for dogs. They cannot drink it or they will wind up in the hospital. And trying to keep your animals out of that toxic pail of water is tough. So that's number two. Number three, it's a tree. Okay, that's obvious. Okay, it's a tree and you have a cat. Cats climb trees, cats climb things. Cats are programmed to go up in the world, to look at all of the verticality that the world has to offer. You know I'm always talking about tree dwellers. Well, your cat's gonna be a Christmas tree dweller or they're gonna wanna be. And that means your tree will fall down. Your cat will jump up in there and depending on how, you know, big boned your cat might be, they're gonna hit a certain branch and the whole thing's gonna come down. Depending on how you light up that tree, well, your cat could also get electrocuted very easily. There's the ornaments, broken glass. There's all kinds of things that are in that tree that you cannot ask a cat not to go to. It's like trying to have a pet parakeet flying loose in your house and say, well, Jackson, I've got a pet parakeet flying loose in the house and I've got a cat and I don't want my cat to kill the bird. You see this look on my face right now? Yeah, there's nothing you can do. You have a cat and you have a bird and the cat is kind of programmed to kill and eat the bird. Programmed over hundreds of thousands of years. Same thing with the tree. So there's that. Here are my top solutions for having a tree and a cat in your house. Number one, let's start with the ornaments themselves. So ornaments are, well, they're cat toys, right? They're usually glass or they are at least reflecting. Maybe they're plastic, but maybe they're crystal, whatever they are. They still take light and turn it into a prism and redirect that light all over the place. So if you think that a laser toy is fun for your cat, ooh, ornaments, that much more fun. So the best thing that you can do when it comes to ornaments is number one, pick carefully. I would stay away from ones that are basically prisms and go for more of the wooden or plastic hanging ones or something like that. But if you are are going to use any ornament, you also don't want it to swing because again, that's just asking that inner raw cat to go, that is something that I can kill and I'm gonna get up there and kill it. So the best thing you can do is tie the ornaments up right onto the branch. So it's not hanging below like this, it's up on the branch. You get the feeling of ornament without the uh, invitation to absolute cat disaster. The second thing that you can do is use a deterrent of some kind and disguise it as an ornament. For instance, you can take a Ziploc bag and poke holes in it and inside put lemon or orange or grapefruit zests or shavings. Cats usually don't really dig the smell of citrus, especially when it's really strong. So if you put uh, a scent deterrent around the tree and just hang it up on the branch, the lower branches, just like you would, uh, an ornament and from a distance nobody will know what it is but your cat definitely will know what it is also you can use things like double-sided tape and put that around the perimeter of the tree itself around the presence
lessens themselves as well. Because ribbon and cats eat, no, uh, trip to the vet, bye bye. There's also, you've seen me use this on the show many, many times, motion activated air blasters. And it's not a big deal, it's just a puff of air that comes out. And you can have a couple of those around the tree itself so when the cat comes up to it, they just get a poof of air and that's it. That's all it's gonna take and they're gonna move to a better place. Secure your tree, anchor it to the wall, anchor it to the ceiling. Make sure that you can imagine your cat like a flying squirrel launching themselves from the TV all the way to the tree. And when they hit, we gotta make sure that it's not gonna go anywhere. It's gotta be totally cat proof. The next tip I have, if you're gonna have a Christmas tree, is to say yes to something. Remember my whole philosophy of no and yes. No, I don't want you to be here, so I'm gonna put some deterrence around here and make it not so fun for you. But over here, I'll say yes. The Christmas tree is always put in one of the most socially significant spots in your house, right? You think about it. Whether it's right by the fireplace, whether it's in the middle of the living room, it's going to be where the most people can see it and where you, as the person who lives there, have the best chance of seeing it constantly and going, ah, the holidays. So for your cat, you want to complement that area with a cat tree or extra cat beds. Or if there's a window where the, the tree is going to be near, make sure they have a perch near that window. Now. Be careful because you don't want that cat condo to be within jumping distance of the tree because your cat will do that too. Wait, stop it, stop right here. Sorry to interrupt, but this one is good, all right? So I was uh, communicating with a Team Cat Mojo member. Her name is Anne Marie in Marshall, Minnesota. Shout out to you, Anne Marie. She does what's called the cat mystery. Brilliant, because when we say no, no, I don't want you in the Christmas tree, which clearly we've been saying this whole time, we want to say yes. So what Anne Marie does is she puts out a brand new cat condo, one that's new to the house, and she can make it all nice and fun by putting fresh beds in there, putting treats in there that, that they don't usually get, so they're attracted to it, they want to go in there. New toys are in there, and she can hang, not ornaments, but little cat toy ornaments that hang from the top of this cat mystery, making it something that the cats are just wanting to explore, they want to go to it. It makes perfect sense. We put it near the Christmas tree, of course not too near it, so that they jump over to the tree. You know, you gotta be a little strategic here, but it's an amazing way of using the no, yes approach, saying no, I don't want you here, but yes, you can still be here, be part of the family, be part of the action, and not have to destroy our tree. Again, thank you, Anne-Marie. Brilliant, the cat mystery. Listen, you know what, stop the presses. I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm not telling you not to have a Christmas tree. You can have a Christmas tree, but uh, you might wanna think about a fake tree. It's okay, it's okay. Don't kill the messenger here. I'm just saying that you can replace the vibe, right? Christmas trees have vibe, don't they? And uh, you can replace the smell. You burn a candle in the corner with pine type smell. There's incense that smells like pine. And then you get to have the holiday spirit without the holiday mess or the holiday trip to the vet in the middle of the night or that sound of a crash when your cat decided to climb the Christmas tree, etc. These are times where you want to think about your cat's most destructive tendencies, destructive to you, integral to them, native to their brains. This is how they think. It's just because of the way you're setting up your life that it's inconvenient and destructive to you. In fact, when you think about it, a Christmas tree is one of those real negotiating hard points between a cat and a human. The human says, it's tradition, tradition. I want a tree in the middle of my house. A cat says, well, I know because the raw cat back here in the back of my brain knows what a tree is for. And I'll tell you what a tree is for. A tree is for camouflage. A tree is to bring my kill to. A tree is to climb up and, and take a good look at my territory. That's what a tree is to me. And the person says, oh, Oh, a tree is a decoration and a symbol of all things holiday. No, a tree is a place where blah, blah, blah. This is where the cat and human diplomacy just seriously breaks down when it comes to important things. Well, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to try to break that down, get you to understand why destroying everything tree related in your house is uh, nature to cats. So we have to think of holiday time diplomacy. And the tree is a symbol of that diplomacy along with a symbol of a lot of other things. And that's it. 
So I'm not telling you not to get a tree. Uh, I am kind of telling you, don't, don't get a real tree. If you have cats and dogs, it's just, man, it's a problem. But get a fake tree. And if you're not gonna listen to me, then just listen to all the tips I just gave you and have yourself a merry little, safe little, wonderful little time with your animal family and your human family and your friends. Remember what you're grateful for and I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful holiday season. Light, love, mojo. Meow.